sent representatives to Kansas, because Kansas already had many zinc smelting operations, and they simply pulled a lot of the workers from Kansas into Bartlesville. They figured, why not get a bunch of people that already know uh, how to do the work? Now, with this, many of the workers were immigrants, and the majority of them being Polish. Um, around 1880 to 1900, about two million Polish immigrants came to the United States, and many of them into the Midwest. So Oklahoma saw about 1,500 uh, families, Polish families, around this time as well. But many ended up working in the mining fields or smelting. So when they found out that Bartlesville had new zinc smelters that were paying more, the majority of people in Kansas moved to Oklahoma. And in fact, there were a few news articles saying that the doctor in Bartlesville moved from Kansas and he felt like he never left because all of his patients came with him. So now everyone's in Bartlesville. But the zinc smelters are outside of city limits, and this is important for this story. The smelters are outside of city limits. They are not under the jurisdiction of Bartlesville. So when these immigrants move into the area, they establish their own little ethnic communities around the smelters outside of Bartlesville city limits. So the city has no control over what they do. Now, some of these terms, and I'll, I'll mention them once, um, they gave each little enclave its own special name. So you had Skeeter Row, which was located in the swampy uh, part of town, Smelter Town, which was the community north and east and closest to the smelters, Frog Hollow, Ragtown, Border Town, all these little tiny communities, which Bartlesville ends up just calling them Smelter Town for the majority. So if you hear me say Smelter Town, I'm talking about all of these communities together. But Smelter Town was its own thing. The city of Bartlesville prospered. They were perfectly fine with the smelters being outside of their jurisdiction because it meant that they didn't have to extend the sewer line. They didn't have to extend electricity. Uh, but it meant that the immigrants were basically on their own. So they built their own houses. Many of them built them out of uh, wood from the train cars. So they had these, they called them ad hocs. They were just houses strung together with crates and boxes and established a vibrant community. And to many of the Polish that grew up there, they said it felt like you never left Europe because the community did everything together. They had public events. And all of these things were quite odd to the people in Bartlesville. But the Polish community thrived, and Bartlesville ended up having one of the largest in the state. But after only a few years, uh, things start to turn. Now this is the early 1900s, this is the progressive era, but it's also the time of a lot of nativist ideas. And the thought that the immigrants need to Americanize to be truly a part of this community. And to their credit, the Polish community does push for this Americanization. They start an English school, they start a baseball league, they start doing all these things considered American. And there is no problem for the first five years. However, as we push around 1910, the city of Bartlesville starts to realize that the communities outside of their reach have a lot of alcohol. They have a lot of fights. They have all these things that the progressive leaders in Bartlesville don't approve of. But again, they're outside city limits, so what can they do? Well, eventually, in 1911, there comes an instance where a fight breaks out and a few officers from Bartlesville come out to Smelter Town to stop it. And in the scuffle, um, shots are fired and one of the deputies is shot. And this leads to a, a massive fear in Bartlesville that the Polish community is going to uprise and fight back against the city. So the city of Bartlesville in 1911 decides to start pushing policing in Smelter Town in order to keep the Polish community um, calmed down. Now, obviously, feeling high in Bartlesville over a pitched battle with foreigners. Again, you can see how the city views these Polish immigrants. They're foreigners, they're not Americans. And eventually, they hope that it's now quiet, uh, no more trouble over mob violence. But the city is starting to see that they want to do something. They want to keep this community under their own charge and keep them under control. So, eventually, around 1914, as you might know, World War I breaks out. 
Well, many of the immigrants in Smelter Town have sympathies one way or the other. So fights break out in Smelter Town. Uh, this one, for instance, was an Austrian and uh, a German that for some reason decided to fight over what they thought about World War I. And the city thought it was a, uh, they called it a race riot. But it was just an argument in the street. They got arrested, um, no bond held. But the city was now afraid that if something was going to happen with these immigrants, it's going to be uh, sympathies over World War I. However, the city wasn't really too concerned. The United States isn't involved, so it's not a big deal. Um, but again, they want to start policing the immigrants. So the Polish community actually creates this genius idea. They create their own jail. And so at night, if someone gets too drunk and they're rowdy, they put them in there and then they go and get them in the morning. So the Bartlesville City Police have no excuse to come arrest them because it's being handled. So smelter town residents are already afraid of the city overstepping and they're making steps to avoid it. Well, by 1915, thanks to the dry state of Oklahoma and the progressive thought, this idea of alcohol becomes the new issue. All of these bouts of violence, that third jail, are all dealing with alcohol. So the city decides that it needs to step in for the good of the community, not the immigrants, but the community in Bartlesville, to end any alcohol in these towns. Now, I do want to point out that one of the towns, uh, Ragtown, actually made some apparently very good liquor out of prunes, so they changed the name to Pruneville. So it was the known place to go buy alcohol, and many residents in Bartlesville would buy their alcohol there, but the city pushed its progressive ideas. So they start raiding all these joints in Smelter Town. Any house that had alcohol would be raided. And the city realized once they raided these places, the city would just seize the property. So the city started seizing houses in Smelter, uh, Smelter Town one by one. And they would push this idea of anti-alcohol, we're cleaning up the streets, we're cleaning up Smelter Town, making it safe. Now, this is fine and dandy until uh, May 1915, when the police declare that Smelter Town has finally been ridded of all alcohol and they turn their attention to Bartlesville. And once Bartlesville is being raided for alcohol, the citizens are angry and they start pushing articles uh, demanding to know why these officers are raiding Bartlesville. And in fact, they try to shift the blame and they start offering a $25 reward to anyone that can say, hey, they have alcohol in Smelter Town. Not in Bartlesville, but in Smelter Town. So now the citizens of Bartlesville are able to rat out Smelter Town to push the cops back out there, not in here. So beginning in 1914, 1915, the city of Bartlesville is already expanding its reach into Smelter Town, seizing houses. They continue to do this when they realize that Smelter Town is not really a clean place. It has no sewer. It has no electricity, it has no running water, uh, it's at the uh, bottom of the smelters, it's a place that is really easy to get sick in. So smelter town tends to be where uh, disease outbreaks start. And one of the earliest is in 1912, there's a meningitis outbreak. And the city, instead of offering to help, instead of deciding to quarantine everyone, they will only quarantine smelter town. So, call the police out, no one's allowed to leave Smelter Town, leave the disease there, it'll die itself out and it won't infect us in Bartlesville. And so every time an outbreak occurs, we just police Smelter Town, keep them in so they don't infect us. But they don't push any hospitals, they don't push for any sanitation, they don't push for any um, help for Smelter Town, they simply just want them to stay there. Well. This starts to spark an idea. What if we clean up parts of Smelter Town, but only the parts that are connected to us? So they start pushing for the west side. We can expand our sewer system that way. We can expand electricity that way. And it will help clean everything up for us in Bartlesville. But the issue is most of the area on the west side is uh, already occupied by Polish immigrants. So the city is going to have to start coming up with excuses 
to push the Polish immigrants out so they can expand the city proper. So want closer quarantine. This kind of tells it all. There's another outbreak of smallpox in Smeltertown, but the city of Bartlesville doesn't think that the cops are doing enough. They don't think that they're keeping them quarantined tight enough. So they push for the city to forcefully come in and force people farther and farther away from Bartlesville. Their houses are too close to some of our neighborhoods and we don't want to get sick. So we want the city to push them away and then clean it up so that we feel better. Now, the city is not keeping this a secret. It's not like I'm just assuming that the city's doing this. They're putting it in the newspaper. So grand opening lot sale, Overlees. Now the Overlee brothers showed up in Bartlesville and started um, pushing um, real estate. They wanted to help the city grow. Now, the city of Bartlesville is expanding quite a bit because of the industry. But the Bartlesville proper is running into an issue, Smeltertown. This grand opening, that third edition they're talking about, half of that third edition is in Smeltertown, which is already occupied by Polish immigrants. This is not a, a secret. This is open in the newspaper. And then they start realizing, well, if we clean it up and we kick them out, we can just say that's part of the city now. So in this advertisement, they mention to prospective buyers, it will have clean water, it will have electricity, it's all the things they're planning on doing once they kick out the Polish. So the city is planning very openly to sell their property. Now, this gets to the heart of the argument. The city really hasn't had an excuse to get rid of these Polish immigrants. There hasn't been something big enough besides seizing one or two properties for alcohol. Well, Pamela McElway in her book, Forest or Gold, she, uh, Forest or Gold, she coins this term environmental rule, which means uh, whereby states, organizations, and individuals use environmental explanations to justify policy interventions in other social areas, a, uh, such as populations, markets, settlements, or cultural identities. So basically, uh, some group, like the city of Bartlesville, can find an environmental excuse, and in this case, the 1918 flu epidemic, to push out a certain people, to push their uh, policies on a group of people that are outside of their jurisdiction, outside of their city limits. So, April 1917, the United States joins World War I. Now, the lead and zinc uh, smelters are even more profitable because the United States needs ammunition, so the lead is going to ammunition. Well, everything seems to be fine. The city puts a pause on the Overlees edition. They're not going to sell those lands. They're not going to push anything because we're in the middle of a war and we need to support. And it's important to point out that many of these Polish families send their sons to the war. Many Polish uh, men from the Smeltertown community go serve in the army. Right? So they're a part of this. But by September of 1918, the influenza outbreak starts to impact the United States. Now, the first few cases to hit Oklahoma City are in September, and people start to realize this might be a problem. So the city of Bartlesville starts putting out news articles saying, hey, we need to just be prepared. People might get sick. Um, let's, let's get ready. Well. Here's a big issue. So October 5th, 1918, this is the first victim of the flu in Bartlesville. His name is Lloyd Pope. That same day, a train rolls into town, and it's from the 4th Victory Loan. And this train was traveling all over the country, and on it were German war trophies and all these things to make people come support the war effort, give money, um, and in this case, they wanted peach pits for gas masks. Well, when the train arrived in Bartlesville, Hundreds of people flocked to come see this train. And everywhere it went, it left Bartlesville through Tulsa, Oklahoma City, hundreds and hundreds of people flocked to come see the train. And in every single town, four days later, they declare a state of emergency because the flu has hit. So in Bartlesville, it only takes four days after the train arrives. They close down all schools, all churches, all community events. They start publishing what to do in case you have the flu, and they start reporting over 400 cases of the flu. 
Now, for those of you who don't know, the flu in 1918 is not like the flu we know today. All right? You don't get sick for a little bit and get over it, and there's no vaccine. The flu in 1918 targets all mucous membranes. So people that get it will likely develop pneumonia, and they will bleed, bleed from their eyes, bleed from everywhere. And they will cough so hard, they break a rib. It's a horrible disease. And fortunately, we haven't seen that type of virus since then. But the city doesn't know what to do, so they start to panic. They just start closing up everything. And then when the hospital fills up, they have to open a second hospital. And then it fills up. So they have to open a third emergency hospital. And then it fills up. And all the while, Smelter Town is being the hardest hit. Again, it's not clean, it's not sanitary. So the majority of people in Smelter Town are getting sick and they aren't given access to much of the hospital. So they have to stay home. Their families are all just sitting in the, the living room trying to get through this. Um, in the middle of this, middle of this epidemic, the mayor of Bartlesville decides I know the problem, it's Smelter Town. They're the source of the flu, so we need to start cleaning it up. So they take a little walk out to the west side, just so happens to be the part where that addition is supposed to go, and they say, wow, it's dirty, there's a lot of pigsties here. Well, of course, they don't have much, the pigs are a part of their community, it's their food, it's their money. The city says, nope, unsanitary, all of these pigs have to go. Every single one of you must remove your pigsties. Remove the outhouses, can't do this. Well, to get rid of their pigs is to get rid of a lot of their livelihood. So this means the family must move with the pigs. So in a way, the city is pushing them out saying, take your pigs and go away. This is dirty, we don't like it. And it's all in the name of sanitation to make the city cleaner. Well, the flu kept spreading and everyone is still trying to figure out a way to get, a, uh, get a, ahead of it the hospitals are busy. The city is in a horrible, horrible state. But it doesn't matter because now the city is getting angry at Smelter Town. And I know this is a lot to read, you don't need to read it. But the article is, it's time to act. And it's a call from the people of Bartlesville to clean up Smelter Town. They ask the police to go in and to forcibly take over Smelter Town for their sanitation, to make them feel better. They asked the police to come in and start rounding up the sick. They asked to push them out because they're too close to Bartlesville. Their disgusting air is making us sick, and we can't have this. So the city is on edge already, and now it seems they're about to start violent, uh, violently trying to push back one way or the other. But by October 18th, the flu is starting to recede. All right, there are less and less cases, there are less and less deaths, and by October 20th, the flu is almost not an issue. But it doesn't matter, because the city has already used this as an excuse to force the Polish out. So they push the cleanup of the pigsties. They send in the police and force these families and their pigs away, force them out of their homes. That's not going fast enough, so the city calls out the National Guard. The National Guard comes in to force these people and their pigs out of this area that's supposed to be the addition for the city. And then by December, they've pushed out the Polish communities from the addition. They've cleaned up the area. They've now added water and electricity, which they hadn't done before. And they decide, the city of Bartlesville decides, to officially take in the second addition, which is just north. And then in January, the city declares that that third addition, where most of those Polish immigrants live, is a state of emergency that needs to be a part of the city immediately. And they take that part of Smelter Town. So now with the Polish uh, community gone, the city expands. And they keep up this policy. Slowly but surely, they're going to keep cleaning out the areas and expanding the city. Well, by 1919, the war is over. The zinc and lead is not needed for the war effort. The city has turned downright violent towards the Polish community, and so many of them have started to leave. And this is just the city directories. Um, Stanley Kazmierczak, who grew up in Bartlesville, he sat down with these and you know, was writing down each family he knew was Polish. So by 1912, the number was about four to 500 
families had moved into the area. By 1917, you have 119 names. Now, this represents a household, right? So in the directory, a name can represent one whole family. So you have 119 families. By 1919, you have 91. By 1920, 39. By 1921, 17. A far cry from the 400 that had been there not even 10 years prior, right? So through using these ideas of policing, quarantining, and then environmental rule, and the flu providing a perfect example, the city of Bartlesville was able to push out Polish immigrants in order to expand their own city limits and clean it up for their citizens, uh, simply because of this idea of nativism and that the Polish were not quite white, but they weren't not white, they were just other. Um, so with that, I will end it there and open it for any questions. I will still have a few minutes. Thank you.